Club. That's what I can say. All right, so <clears throat> we're on Blackboard. What I did was I went into, or we'll go into course content. And in unit three, Oh, course evaluation, if you haven't done that, I think today's the last day for that. So you, you might want to take care of that. Uh, counts as a small quiz grade, so definitely uh, definitely worth doing, right? That's, um, yeah, five-point quiz grade, but all you have to do, you, you don't have to, not that anybody's trying to do this, but you don't have to actually send me anything more than just the little receipt that says that you submitted the survey, right? That's all I'm looking for there. Um, so anyway. Yeah, you submit it there, five point, yeah. It's not optional, account against you if you don't complete it, All right? So unit three assessment, it's designing a PBL, All right? So I'll, I'll open the file. Uh, you see that, oh, font size got a little crazy here. I'll have to adjust that, but I'll take it as a typo from somebody, anybody who needs some bonus credit, All right? So I'll click on this bad boy here. Uh, you'll see that the next gen topics that I included here were only the grade three topics. That's important to keep in mind. Uh, you'll see why in a second. So I click on this bad boy. It opens the Word doc. So what is a PBL? Project-based learning is tech, uh, teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to authentic, engaging, and complex question, problem, or challenge. All right. So I've, I've mentioned this a few times throughout the course. Uh, you know, like I, I presented you with lots of bland, like old school type of, you know, common core sorts of um, word problems. But then I tell you what you could do, right? Like how you could jazz this up to make it more interesting. So that's what you're doing. That's what you're going to do now. You're going to take a word problem or two and jazz it up to make it more real world, make it more interesting, make it more engaging. All right, don't go crazy with the concept of extended period of time. It's elementary school. Extended period of time for elementary school students is like an hour, all right? So we're not talking about like something where I, I give you a month to do an assignment, that, that, that's different. You know, it's kind of like, um, kind of like the naughty corner. You know how they, they say, I, I forget what the ratio is, but it was like something like for every year, that's one more minute in the naughty corner or something like that when the kid is misbehaving when they're very young. So if they're two years old, you only put them into the naughty corner for two years, or two years, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> you could come out now, <laughs> you're all grown up. Uh, no, uh, for two minutes. So, you know, the idea is that young kids perceive time differently, you right? uh, know, 30 seconds is like a lifetime for them. So, um, so yeah, what you can do is you just, as long as what you come up with is what you would think to be in authentic, engaging, you know, complex for that age group, uh, then, then it's gonna be fine by me. If you're, if you're in doubt, then let me know and, uh, and I'll, I'll help you kind of diagnose what the problem is, All right? I, get, I put a few articles up here that should be helpful. I'm, I'm not big on um, reading. Like uh, reading for, you know, like fiction, enjoyable reading, that's that's different. Like reading for work, it's like, oh, another article. These are the shortest articles I could find related to this concept, All right? So I recommend that you actually take a few minutes and read through them. Honestly, uh, a total, it should take you a total of five minutes for all three articles. It's like boom, 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 All right? You got the gist, that's all you need when it comes to a PBL. All right, you're going to choose one of the topics from the, the, the file next gen topics. Well, it's next gen topics third grade. All right, so another type of using the concept discussing class development uh, PBL. You'll need to, you can tell I copy and paste these from the first uh, unit or something. Uh, you'll need to include these components the topic, the rationale, you know, why, you know, what was your justification in choosing this, prior knowledge, if any, uh, objectives, student outcomes, materials description of the procedure. That's if it's something that they actually have to carry out like in an, an investigation or a, a, a exploration. Um, method of assessment and uh, rubric, all right? Um, I, I, I leave it up to you because we covered a, a lot of different skills in this class. It, you kind of look back and you're like, really, did we? 
you know, Desmos, GeoGebra, all those different things are available to you that you can incorporate into this. But like I said, you don't have to go too crazy. This is not designed to bog you down. But if you want students to have an engaging process in class, uh, you might want to take some of the concepts that we've covered, you know, and, and tie them into some form of technology and see where that goes, right? It should be compiled into a single document, uploaded to the Blackboard, you know the deal there, right? Uh, the rubric below, that's how you're going to be graded. I'm very forgiving when it comes to this. Uh, if, you, if you get everything submitted on time with, with honest intent, I'm very uh, relaxed when it comes to scoring based off of the rubric. You've seen that before. You know, I, I kind of err on the side of giving more credit when I'm ever in doubt. Uh, and you've also seen in certain cases that it hasn't applied to everyone because it hasn't had to apply to everyone. But I have kicked back some assignments to say, hey, you missed this. If you fix it, I'll give you full credit. You know, and so that that's still on the table there. So um, but just put a put forth an honest effort and you'll be you'll be perfectly fine. Right. Um, my my rule of thumb when it comes to really any class that I teach is that anybody who puts forth an honest effort throughout the entire semester, like nobody fails under those circumstances. Nobody's gonna fail the course. All right. Now what happens is some people, and that's why I'm recording what I'm saying here. So people kind of tune in and out. And all they hear is nobody fails the course. I'm like that's not what I said. What I said is if you put forth an honest effort throughout the entire course, you're not going to fail. All right. So that's if you're doing the right thing, you get all your assignments in, and you put forth an honest effort. There's there's really no there's no possible way that you can fail. All right. So with that in mind, you don't want to trip at the finish line. Right, because uh, I've had people do that. Yeah, I'm good to go. It'll be all fine. It'll all be, uh, good, you know, rainbows and sunshine. And then uh, you bag this assignment, and all of a sudden, whoa! You just found out that there is a way to fail. Right? Uh, should contain a fully worked solution. Right? So you're asking the students to do some work related to unit three material. So it's all multiplication, basically. You know, sprinkling in a little division. But you're not going to ask them to do something you can't do yourself, right? So you're going to you're going to provide a solution of anything that you ask them to do in terms of the uh, the PDL. And uh, what I did for your convenience, I attached the relevant portion of the next gen curriculum standards. All right, so let me pull that up if I can get this dang thing out of the way here. All right, so the next gen standards <clears throat> for it's grade three, and you could see that it's focused on everything related to multiplication, right? Areas, multiplication, uh, geometric measure, uh, perimeters and areas. So maybe not perimeters, but multiplication. Relate area to the operation of, of multiplication and addition, right? Scaled pictures, volumes, right? So when you're talking about a PBL, you know, there's some things that you might wanna focus on but if you're if you're thinking about volume, for example, you know, uh, let me see if I can find that. I just had it and I scrolled right past it. I get a little scroll happy here. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, liquid volume. Right. So a PBL would have you giving the students an opportunity to kind of get their hands dirty. Right. So maybe you give them an object that's got, you know, like a, a planter, you know, you give them a planter filled with soil and ask them to figure out the volume, right? Some of them are rectangular. Some of them are cylindrical. You know, you can, you can get creative with it. You know, if you, go, if you focus on really the, this particular curriculum, you probably wanna stay with things like rectangular objects, but hey, who's to say that you don't have a rectangular container that you fill with water? How much water's in there? You know, what's the volume? You know, but ask them about volume without using the word volume. How much water is in there? Keep it vague. Let them come up with a solution, right? So that, that's kind of the idea behind a PBL. If, if I always had it in mind when, when I first was introduced to the concept of a PBL, I, I always had it in mind, especially in high school, college. Like, why do I have to do PBLs? They're doing that for me in science. Every time they do a lab, they're doing a PBL. They're applying the math that I'm teaching in, in, in math class. They're doing that in science class. 
So if you kind of bring that down into the elementary curriculum, you're not wrong. You know, you're thinking, okay, I'm creating a lab, right? But really just kind of nothing too crazy because again, it's not a science class. So we don't have to get into all the different characteristics and attributes related to science, so like density and, and mass and stuff like that. Just the mathematics of it is all we really care about. You know, so if you want to get into the area, okay, so what, what are some aspects of area that you can talk about? Well, how about the shadow length of an object, right? What's the area of the object that's facing the light source? And what is the area of the shadow? And how do they relate to one another? You know, it's just, just I'm just spitballing here, just some ideas, you know, and, and you don't have to research too much online before you find some, uh, some ideas, all right? Movement, distance, displacement, all that stuff we've talked about. Uh, units, units of measure, uh, yards versus feet versus meters, things like that. Proportional relationships, how one value just multiplied by a number, a constant value will give you another value like that the Melissa and Nick example. Nick ran 10 miles, but Melissa ran double that. You know, all sorts of contextual situations. You know, tie it to sports if you want, if you're a sport-minded individual. You know, you, you have, you have a, a, a current NFL season going on. If you like sports, then there you go. You have data galore. You know, just focus on one game. This, this running back ran for this number of yards. That running back ran twice as many. You know, and give them a list. Which running back ran twice as many, uh, ran for twice as many yards as, you know, pick a running back. It doesn't matter. I'm a little out of it when it comes to that because my, my running back sucks. Uh, but anyway, so just, just some thoughts. Right? A lot of things that you can play off of here. You can get into medical stuff. You can get into engineering. You can get into just human behavior. A lot of, a lot of different possibilities. I'll leave it up to you. All right. So that's due a week from tonight. But I'm also going to stop labbing here so that you can get you can have some time to get started on it. So I'm going to stop the recording.